budget by $450,000. They are therefore looking at, um, if you look at the bottom paragraph, the governor would have two options available to him as the new biennium budget goes into effect. He could call the legislature in special session to do program cuts, or um, alternatively on the next page, he could order all state agencies to take an equal reduction of up to 5% third page is this, what Cape Elizabeth's um, reduction would be in 108429 Now, um, before you get too panicky about this, I <laughs> talked with Mike McGovern today. Um, he has also been following this, um, and he reminded me that they have found approximately a hundred business equipment um, taxes or something up in Augusta, or they appear to have. Um, so um, it's not an all or nothing piece. Uh, plus, we have been approved to expend a certain amount of money. Not, we were not based on how much we were receiving from the state. So if we take separate action by the town council to go back in and change that bottom line, um, bottom line was based on a 3.3% increase, not on what we were receiving from the state. We're still getting, how many, what are we still getting, about 200,000 more than we did last year? The current, the current numbers are $337,000. With this 108 reduction, we still receive 228000 More than, more than, more than we did current. last year. So, I don't want people to panic over this, but I want you to be aware of it because it's going to be a, an ongoing conversation as we move forward. Yeah. I, for myself, personally, as a board member, I feel that this is a non-issue for the school board. Mm -hmm. The way that we work with the budget is the town council is they approve an expenditure amount. And um, that's the basis of our presentation to them, that's the basis of the approval. And I uh, expect where this is really going to impact is they no longer benefit from the in terms of taxpayer relief as much as they have wanted to do I would agree with you on that. And um, I'm not quite sure if I, um, my other reaction was that um, he would be surprised if the state went after school revenues because the purpose of those was for taxpayer relief.
look at it and then they compare it all to the other options. But um, for a president who is supposedly bent on no child left behind to cut out support for reading and math makes no sense at all. So, um, Interesting. And are these in order of weight of your suggestions? Are they more than this? No. I, they were just thoughts. federal government cut out of the budget. They reduce the amount for Title I overall, and part of our reduction is because our free and reduced lunch count has dropped below 5 percent. That's part of it. Part of it is because the reduction overall is part of the Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So um, there's been a reduction what the state of Maine gets for Title I that they redistribute. There's also a reduction because CAPE has fallen from 7% to free and reduced lunch to less than 5%, 4.3%, I think. 4.1. 4.1. Yeah. Um, How many kids are reading recovery right now? Um, it's about 16 kids a year, uh, 12 or 16 a year per teacher.
to be ill, it's going to be close to the 250. Okay. All right, I have some other questions. I'll pursue that so I know this may be more technical in nature. And if other people have other thoughts or other places that you might look, please share them with us because it's a wide open question. We don't want to see this report go away. probably the best way to start is to get the other three nominations out to everybody with whatever explanations need to go along with them. And then let's go the four that were in the package were from uh, Ponco. They were the three teacher nominations, uh, new teacher nominations, and the one transfer from a half-time kindergarten position to a full-time uh, teacher position. The other three Lawler Rona. Thank you. Um, and is the recommendee for the um, art position at the middle school? Do you want to talk to these? Yeah, I think that would probably as we go along. Yeah. Go right ahead. Gladly. Um, it's quite a process. Um, Nancy and I looked at 46 applications for the art position. Uh, worked our way from 46 to 15, uh, presented 15 to the interview committee. Uh, we decided to interview nine. Um, I heard constantly about two or three that didn't make that six cut that we probably should have interviewed. They're probably right, um, because if there's anything we learned, there is an incredible amount of passionate, dedicated art educators out there. And I don't think a lot of jobs. And as you know, Susie's been there for 16 years. and. Uh, so we saw some fantastic people, but this one person who was the unanimous choice of the committee has just, uh, she's just, she's got the whole package. She's, she's unbelievable. Um, Westbrook Teacher of the Year, Maine State Teacher of the Year, um, tremendous grant writer, does a lot through um, technology with art. Um, she's she's going to be a huge benefit to our middle school program. Two CD-ROMs, a video. Um, the, the, the best thing was to see them, I mean, they're all artists themselves, but the best thing was to see them speak to student work. And thankfully, we had, um, we had our teachers from the Pond Cove and from the high school to help Andy and I with that, that aspect. <laughs> Welcome. Um, the next person is a special education achievement center position um, from the high school. Jeff, if you'd like to speak to uh, Rob Thompson. Um, I've met with Rob. I, um, if you Claire and I, we didn't have quite that many applications, but we, but we had some good applications. And over the course of two, uh, uh, two rounds of interviews, I think we interviewed probably seven people in Los Angeles, which took us out. He has got a quite an interesting background. He was very highly recommended from a couple of very intensive uh, programs where he is a teacher supporting kids who are. So this would actually be his first experience in a regular 
We're not this 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 particular role. We're not necessarily dependent on computer skills. Mm -hmm. He's primarily working with the coding software, but he worked mm -hmm. a lot on technology. Um, so I think it would be it would be able to pick it up and be very conversant in it. So the days where he's the technology that's in the future. This is the part-time position that we have already. She also comes comes to the position quite frankly with a side benefit that she is she is from town, so she has a lot of connections already. And one of the things that we're hoping to do is to use her to bring some people uh, from the community and volunteers that she has done it even as far as she did. So we're very excited to have some presentation. I think she's going to be there. Four years. Just 
to uh, reinforce what we did for a process, I think we had 140 paper applications that we screened. Um, I want to compliment Deb Sampson, who uh, could have been transferred, but I thought it would be important that the team meet her, uh, particularly with the parent on the committee. Uh, very competitive. I was very impressed with the performance of all the applicants. We did kind of go with people we knew, but the uh, Tara, who's currently working in Portland, I think is a real, real fine. Um, so it was, it was a good process. I think it worked really well. And the choices are unanimous. Yeah. Um, by the way, it's not unusual to get 100. Well, it's unusual to get 140, but I think it was because we had three elections or something that we advertised at the same time um, in elementary. Um, you don't kind of tend to get those kinds of uh, numbers for particularly special ed positions, if I might say, or, or positions like that. Uh, and that's, that's the thing that's going on in the state. You see it with administrators, you see it with um, foreign language, you see it with special ed. Um, out so that there's at least six cards, one per department, basically 24 stations in each one, uh, some for checking out in the library. Uh, and the finances are on the second page. So there was a typo down near the bottom that I didn't catch before it went out to you. He's been worried about that all along. Yes, I said, stop worrying about it. <laughs> We got it out finally. It cost zero. Then. <laughs> 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 These are exact prices of you know, what it cost. We were kind of dealing with ballpark figures before, but this, this is what it would cost to, to continue and get the extra laptops for the staff. So. Um, Gary has been very clear. No, but I mean, I think given the resources uh, that we have, I think it's a, I think it's a definitely thing to do in the future. Um, I think it makes that extra amount that we hope it's equal to you. I think that can help in a lot of ways. It allows us to get the numbers in each of the parts up a little bit um, in a way that I think it's significant because, you know, virtually there are a couple of classes. So 
that's that's one big difference between the last plan and this one. And this one. That's very, very good. Does this redistribute um, current teachers that are getting, that will be getting um, laptops? Does this redistribute, I assume, desktops that they're using? Or? Uh, desktops that, that they're, they have right now are probably very old ones. And wouldn't be valuable to redistribute, we'll probably leave them there until they, until they finally die. Most of the older classroom computers are in uh, the five-year range, in, uh, five to six. And the flash drives that the students um, could purchase, um, will, if they uh, put information of programs in their work, they put them on a flash drive, they take them home, is that compatible with a PC as well as a Mac? Yes. I vote for them. <laughs> <laughs> portion of this meeting is at an end and we will begin with uh, workshop. And the first item on workshop is nutrition health issues and discussion nutrition committee. Uh, and I guess we'll begin with Rebecca. regarding the current federal and state um, environment involving nutrition and wellness in the school. Um, and I just would like to open it up for you for a Thank you. 
sure I feel like this is kind of you know putting the cart before the horse of it because I mean here we're going to be forming this committee to really really be looking at this issue in detail and so I'm not sure what this I mean if we want the community to know that we're going to be addressing this I think we can just let the community know that we're going to be forming a committee in the fall that will be comprised of certain people that will be really looking at this in detail you know I'm a little uncomfortable you know, with a statement before we've even really looked in, you know, understood all the ramifications <coughs> of what these mandates are going to be on. Because, you know, a statement like this can be interpreted mm -hmm. in so many different ways. And, um, I mean, you know, should we go sentence by sentence? I mean, you know, all yeah, kinds of, know. a lot of people can interpret anything, you know, any way they want. So I, I guess I'm just not... I don't know, I feel like, what would this really be accomplishing? This, and it sounds like you want the community to, to know that we're going to be addressing the issue of nutrition. And so we can do that. I mean, we can let people know that we're going to be forming a committee. That would do that. And I just, and I wonder what you're hearing, if, if you're saying that you want to assure people that we're addressing that. Is there any reason to believe that we haven't been addressing it or as a school board? Um, I think that um, the, the prospect of the Dunkin' Donuts at the end of the high school has really brought this to a head. And a lot, there, there, I've been approached on a number of occasions as to why the school board had been studying this. And I have had numerous discussions with Bob and Kevin about this. They've explained to me why they don't feel it's appropriate or within their purview, and I passed that on. But there continues to be uh, a level of 
of um, unhappiness with our silence around the issue. Um, and so this is my attempt at saying, okay, we're aware of this issue, and, we, and here's what's coming, here's what our, what, what our roles are going to be uh, defined by, um, but that in light of all of this, down the pipe, we do reach out to the community as a whole and ask for their um, um, how much they're here. The trouble is the community as a whole has no power to let them in the world. I'm not, I'm not talking about, do you understand? I'm not talking about them. This is my attempt to say we are aware of the issue. These are the, this is the, the, the environment and the issue that which we have to work in. And so, Asking community to be sensitive to our task at hand and support the other community. We're not saying yay or nay or anything, but it's just kind of a global statement to say we're aware of it. But this is this is this is the construct with which we need to address this. But the, the donut donuts issue and like this are totally two separate things. The donut and donuts issue is stopping the one. That's a private enterprise. My attempt at saying we are aware of nutrition issues for our students. This is the construct of which we are going to be dealing with it. And if people can be sensitive or supportive of it, that's great. We're not saying you must be. We're not saying how you have to be. We're not saying by which methods or by when. We're just saying this is what we're doing. This is what's coming down the pipe. Everybody understand it. And these are the down the pike is, is I mean, the, 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 it goes sort of on and on. I mean, it's pretty long, and there are a lot of, you know, issues around it. And, I mean, are, you know, if we're going to make a statement, are, have we all looked at all these regulations that are coming down? Do we all understand those regulations? Is this what we want to say about that? I mean, I guess I'm not really sure that it is. I mean, I guess if we're going to be making, if we decide that we want to make a statement, because we feel the community is very concerned about nutrition and feels that we're not enough, then maybe we need to all look at, you know, all this stuff that's coming down so that we can really understand it and see what we really, you know, what are the major things we want to put in there. I mean, I guess if we're going to respond, Rebecca, to these mandates that, you know, that you're talking about here, then I, I want to read those in more detail. And I have looked at them, but um, I'd like to, I'm not sure that this is what I would necessarily say in a statement. Because um, I'm just, are you, I mean, 
Are you I think completely I'm familiar with the... I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. Um, the first paragraph is very clear, it's done, it's But it's coming. not a simple issue. Um, there's... It is not a simple issue yet, yet, but it is. I mean, I think it's pretty clear in that paragraph what is being required. And I would be willing to say something at the end of the second paragraph saying there may be other amendments or changes coming. Um, we will know more as, um, as we approach the fall next year, whatever. But the point is to say this is becoming, this is a whole new area that the schools are now being asked to look at and address. Um, we're going to be doing that, and in light of that, will the community please get to the community? I don't think it's necessary to highlight every single mandate and every single repercussion, et cetera, et cetera, until the policy committee has a chance to sit down and work through every single one. This is just a statement. It is not a, it's not a um, thesis on <clears throat> what the, the intricacies of federal and state mandates. I think that that will overwhelm people, the message will get lost, and it will complicate things. Um, I think this, this is a way to boil it down pretty clearly, the message is received, um, and we can move on to business. some observations. Um, we know that the nutrition issue is coming to us. Leadership, I mean, myself and Ann have spoken about this several times. And in the context of the work that was in our plate, on our plate, most of this year, and continues to be on our plate for this year, we made a very conscious decision to begin to address this through the formation subcommittee of the policy committee beginning uh, probably in late August or early September. So there's one thing. Um, my problem with this statement per se is A, legislation is still at this point in time pending. So we're asking people to cooperate with something we don't know what it is. Um, 
know what the federal mandates are, but as I've looked into them, some of those mandates seem to be rather gray, and I, I, I almost question whether you can characterize them as mandates or recommendations. Um, the reality is that not all people feel the same about nutrition. Um, a lot of people feel that it belongs at the family level and with the families making their decisions. Societies determine that schools take on a greater role. I know what's going on, I'm prepared to take on the role that, that's mandated to us, but I'm unclear as to exactly what that is. I'd like to suggest a compromise, because I think we're, we're starting to get into kind of a circular conversation at this point, and that is that rather than a statement, we delegate someone to write an article expounding to the public what our plans are, why our plans are, how our plans are, and when we're going to begin working on this. Um, we certainly, this has not been an issue we've ignored. Um, that's where I am. This is a workshop. Yeah. If, but we can determine what the consensus is. Well, we can decide to write our Yeah, I support that. Well, it's not what I was looking for, um, but it does not seem to be in the majority of the school board. No, it wasn't. 
Okay, with that, um, we're going to move on to the retreat, which is a better place to address uh, some of Rebecca's questions, I think. Um, well, would you like to begin on this? Now, only that I tried to put down the things I remembered in my memory is very good these days. So, um, looking back at the list of the things we had talked about at different times, August board retreat outcomes. Um, we will get those out to you right away. I meant to have them tonight. I don't think that happened. Um, but they are the um, the results remember in uh, um, of the document that we came away from that meeting with. Um, right after that, within a month of that, Elaine led us in a, a uh, one to three year goal in one of our, I think it was a workshop, because I remember it being in the, <coughs> in the Thomas room, not in the uh, chambers, and we came up with goals. I remember the first one being that we would, within the next two years, complete all of the uh, all of the policy manual, and uh, we got a good start on that, but we really need to go through all of the things that are on that list, and by the way, this package of policies that in your package for tonight was separate because we wanted to get it out to everybody. There will be a policy meeting coming up, and then it will be on the next 
regular agenda. But those are some, not all, of the I policies that have been dealt with and uh, um, you know, thanks to the policy committee for their work. Um, the next thing was you know, the board self-assessment. And I know that um, I believe the Amy has something on that to distribute tonight to get ready for the retreat. Um, the organizational issues, committees and committee structure, how we're going to deal with that. The whole meeting formats, are we going to have one business meeting and one workshop a month, or are we going to do something different in the future? Um, and then other things, like what the record is for you now. Um, and we probably should put that in a separate piece. Um, the whole communications area, the clarification of board and administrative roles, um, the budget process, and this is one that Kevin asked to have added, I think, because of, uh, you know, are we going to wait until budget, till we get to uh, starting to deal with our budget before we ever deal with it, or are we going to be dealing with things through this summer? And by the way, um, tonight we distributed to the, uh, the administrators um, copies of the five-year plan that Elaine and I went over. Um, for things we didn't think were done, check marks for things we did think were done, um, but we're at the end of that. And it's time to be looking five years ahead and to get some rough things down to on a new chart to share with Alan and the board as you start to look forward and where you're going for the future. So that we started that process, but you know, that kind of one piece of the budget process. Um, school board development, what's going to happen on that for the long term and, and uh, as far as um, ways to build the board and to get to solutions to things that people aren't going to do. And then I just left another other open. Those are the things that I thought of as I went back to our meetings. Uh, you may have other things that you want definitely on that.
It was a, a summary of LD 1424, the Joint Standing Committee of Nations. Again, this has been recommended by the Education Committee. It is not enacted yet. Uh, in fact, um, it's sort of been sidetracked a little bit because somebody has attached a, a financial bill to it, so they had to go to another committee. But just quickly to go through, um, the goals that, they, that the uh, commissioner laid out at the top, one through five, Roman numerals one through five, sustaining the original purpose of main learning results, maintaining current timeline is a real question mark, and I'll get to that a little bit later, but ensuring access to the diploma for all students is in there, modification of the local assessment system is in there, and addressing all components of the system to ensure attainment of the original purpose in one um, is in there. Um, the key changes in the statute proposal as you get down bottom, number one. Um, from September to December of this year, the commissioner is sending a review team to every school district in the state. Now, there are 220 school districts. Um, there are um, roughly 60 work days between um, September to December. Um, there's going to have to be more than one team, and they're talking about teams of five people, and so we will get a visiting team coming to us sometime there. But their That's real 50 goal, miles an hour, probably. Yeah, right. <laughs> their real goal in this is to look and see where people are in the process, whether what they're proposing for their local assessment system seems at all reasonable, and um, whether it's workable. Um, you know, they, they've talked about people coming up to testify in Augusta who had a hundred That's what they'll be looking for in making recommendations. And that leads right into number two. The commission has developed technical assistance plans for SAUs. Um, that means for systems that are not ready to move ahead um, to help them. Um, my suspicion next fall is that they will come, they will meet, um, Sarah will wow them, and they will say, gee, the math and, and uh, language arts pieces are ready to go pretty much system, and they are pretty much ready to go. Um, and one of the things that we might want to do, and we've talked about this with the DLT and Sarah and I, is to cut down a little bit on the number of assessments we have and use some of the standard assessments that are coming in a little more so that um, we're not doing separate assessments quite as often. Um, and so then we can take the test of what we have. The third one, current practice of graduation decisions and awarding diplomas based upon credits will continue. It's an important one. It means that kids who are in high school now will get a diploma if they pass all their courses, just like kids have in the past. The next piece to that is that a learning results endorsement can be added to the diploma, and it is not clear yet, and I ask the question again at the meeting with the uh, deputy commissioner, as to whether or not it's one endorsement, you get an endorsement for all of the learning results, or is there one for language arts, one for math, one for science, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That they have not decided that, and they don't know what that will be as yet. And personally, I'd rather see separate ones so that a student can qualify for any and all that they qualify in. Um, but um, they're still working. Language has been added for special ed students to clarify that the diploma will be awarded to those who successfully complete the goals and objectives of their IEP. Um, that is the big concern in Augusta was over could a special ed student ever earn a diploma. They will be able to still earn a diploma whether or not they can earn a, um, an endorsement or the endorsement. Um, the whole redesign for grades 4 and 8 of the MEA, well, it's more than the 4th and 8th grade MEA. It's the MEAs and the NCLBAAs, the No Child Left Behind alternate um, annual assessments. Um, but they
they are going to be redoing all of those to try to be more consistent from year to year so that you can get a picture of your kids and are they making progress as they move from grade to grade or aren't they making progress as they move from grade to grade. I don't think that's a bad thing to have happen. Um, just more consistency in those assessments. Um, measure of student achievement in grade 11. Kids don't take the 11th grade MBA seriously. Why should they? It doesn't count for anything, frankly. It counts for nothing. So what they're looking at now is whether they could use the TSATs, they could use the ACTs, which we're thinking about using with our Achievement Center, whether they could use something else, like college entrance, other college entrance pieces, that would be helpful in getting kids on to further education and would also be meaningful to kids to learn whether they've really learned things or not or whether they're just and they're not just blowing them off. So I think that's a good move on their part. Um, the whole number eight, these are these are the why I said that the uh, the thing about not changing any dates is a little misleading at the beginning because they have changed dates. And the 2008 2009 um, may issue diplomas based upon a payment of the learning results and must report on the number of credit diplomas. Well, um, that's not this year's freshman, that's next year's freshman. Okay, so that's really a delay of one year. And one thing I would urge you to think about as you go through this process is not being at the head of the pack because um, there are certainly going to be challenges I think we should be there as soon as we're ready to be there, but there are certainly going to be challenges. You know, right now we have challenges of my kid should be graduating and isn't or whatever. Now we're going to get challenges as to my kid should get all the learning endorsements and isn't getting them. Um, and what are you going to have to compare to? And short of Jeff being held out uh, to dry and um, the next superintendent being held out to dry because um, there's no standard. Um, what we've asked the commissioner to do is to try to use these means of coming around to be as consistent as they can between the school districts to say that the same standard in each of them, at least close to the same standard. That's a difficult piece, though, when everybody's doing their own local assessments. So you can read down through that part yourself. And then they're gradually cranking up targets for how many people are earning endorsements. And that's the, uh, the way of getting away from just the diploma and getting into making sure that kids are reaching the learning results um, over the years. But it's only 2011, 2012 when they're adding those three areas that we haven't even talked about yet. Classical languages, visual and performing arts, and career prep. And that's only one year off of where the targets were before. So it doesn't give you a lot of time to get ready for those areas, and there is no money being proposed at this point from the state, and that's a key piece to that. There's no money that is required for districts to, you know, you have foreign language in the, uh, the lower grades. Lots of schools don't. If there isn't any money there, I don't know how they're going to require it for career prep or um, the finance, even though you already so um, that's sort of a quick summary, a quick overview of where we are right now. And what we're, what we're doing changes for the future. Again, it has not been enacted. It has been recommended by the Education Committee, but is not um, in, gone through the whole legislature yet. Go ahead, Sarah. If you remember way back in the fall when I talked to you about the templates and I gave you the template from the 8 to 12 and one for each content area. And all of that is up in the air as well. And that's not articulated here. Um, what it would be sort of subsumed underneath what it would mean in order to get an endorsement in English. What would that mean? And that apparently is information that we're reworking some of the, the uh, local assessment guide and considering consistency between the two documents between that us to those criteria. 
so um, really the whole thing is in terms of what's necessary and sufficient in the assessments that would allow us to put an endorsement in a student's diploma. So to, year as well. And so then to what degree will that be made clearer for the beginning of next year so that you'll know what you ought to be working on? Uh, in terms frankly, of I don't see it happening. Um, <laughs> they are going to be coming around and looking at what we've already done. And um, during that fall period. And, you know, remember, this is just the legislation. What really bogged uh, or got us bogged down to some degree before was the rulemaking from the Department of Education. The thing that said you can do 8 to 12 assessments for each subject area for every four years and whatever. So we're going to have to wait to see what they come back with. And what they're saying is they're going to back off of that a little and rely on the, the, um, the number of assessments over a longer period of time to say, okay, that's reasonable and the comparison of that to the NEAs and some other things. But we don't know that until it's enacted. So again, that we're up in the air on some of them. So the way we're, that we're proceeding and looking at those assessments that we've done Thank you.